Back in the locker room, Chris and Wolf. This segment brought to you by Chrysler Jeep Dodge. You know, everywhere I walk around town, Wolf, people always, 9 out of 10 people ask me, how's Myron doing? Have you talked to Myron? So we thought we'd bring him here in person and let everybody talk to you or listen to your stories. Myron, thanks for joining us, brother. Well, you're very welcome, dear Tonshin Wolf, my old colleagues in the booth. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, Myron, uh, I, I know that uh, the other question people ask me, so I'm going to let you tell it. What are you doing these days? Well, I do a lot of things. I'm always behind. I ain't retired. Yeah. I'm retired from broadcasting. Uh, but, uh, you know, I dabble in writing again. I once was a writer. And other things. It seems I'm always behind, but I'm busy. It's, you know, I work so darn slow now. Because old age, I'm doing outstanding, uh, except if you know a store where you can trade in used legs or shrunk <laughs> vocal cords. <laughs> and a day before yesterday, I spent two and a half hours in a dentist chair. Excuse me, Chucky Swim. The, the periodon is two and a half hours. My jaw is still swollen. Outside of that, I'm outstanding. Oh, yes. And, and you don't tell me we ain't got a table here, so I'm wearing a you old, look great. <laughs> old workout pants with a jacket. Uh, you don't tell me things. I told you we were sitting in like a, like it's like a living room. Make What's yourself the matter with you? You didn't tell the man? I told him you'd be he wearing a sweatsuit. Yeah. I, told I him you'd normally do, but I dressed up for you because I oh. figured we got the great one coming in. So then I decided to dud up a little bit. And, All right. Uh, so, so that's they, acceptable. Yes. Now tell yeah. us about you got a DVD out. Tell us about it. Yes, uh, we're taking orders now uh -huh. uh, over the website and the phone number, and uh, the orders will start being filled in maybe a week or so. I understand. It's called Myron's Memorable Moments. Uh -huh. And you know, over the years, I saved stuff, only stuff I thought was maybe a kind of above the ordinary. Uh -huh. And it's been in the works for a year. It took a long time. Uh, but I think if you got a sense of humor, you laugh and you'll love it. If you ain't got a sense of humor, forget it. You know, but it's stuff from, that I did over the years on television, from the broadcast booth, whatever, all kinds of good stuff. I'll tell you about some of it if you give me a chance a little later. Uh, excellent, because I'm thinking... What have you ever done that was ordinary? Because I, I don't think I could ever say you did anything ordinary. Oh, Good point boy. by you, Wolf. <laughs> I, I know ordinary, all right? We're ordinary. That, <laughs> that ain't ordinary, what you, norm, what you do. I mean, watching your career, I love... Did you include any of those things, like, when you dressed up, like, oh, who's the dancer? Uh, you, you would do those different... MC songs. Hammer. Yeah, yeah MC know, Hammer. I sing my Chris, still or Christmas carols that I did every year. I Love them. New Broncos lyrics. or Yonkos. Yes. Yeah, the Broncos, they're just Yonkos. Right. And, and all kinds of stuff. In fact, my favorite in it uh, is uh, you were on the team in 1983, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. When Bradshaw was out all year. Right. Hadn't played because he had this lousy elbow. Right. right. And it, it was really, it was like hanging like an old rubber band. And uh, and, and, and uh, you were going to play late in the season the New York Jets up right. their place at right. Shea Stadium. You needed to win in order to, you know, still be in the race for the division title. Right. And it, Noel announced at the beginning of the week that he not that he's not going with Cliff Stout again right. at quarterback. He's going with Bradshaw, right. rolling the dice. And Bradshaw, that week, I cured his elbow with the a minor, magic minor bird. The minor, the minor bird. bird. Yes, uh -huh. I remember that. It was the last game of his career because his arm went in the second quarter. He right. threw two touchdown passes, give you the lead, and you won 31 to 7. But it's a funny all. If you don't die when you watch it, you guys, the minor bird. We where'd you get the, where'd you get right? the minor bird? Where'd you yeah. get the minor bird? I got it. A guy from Canada called me when Noel made that announcement. Uh huh. A minor bird. I remember because I, I, I got I, two my magic minor birds. I got in India. Uh -huh. He calls me from <laughs> Canada. From India. He says I'll put one of them on Bradshaw's elbow, and he'll be cured. 
And I says, sounds good to me. I says, but I ain't paying your airfare. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he says, that's all right. And he comes in with these two minor birds. They're green and black, you know, and fluffy and squawking. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's all there. You know, I got a cameraman from the station. Right, right. And, uh, you know, put him on. He says, ooh, I feel the power cope. <laughs> Can you pay my alimony? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's hilarious. It's my favorite. But that's the DVD. I mean, it's laughs and then, you know, talk a little personal sure. stuff and one thing and another. But I guarantee you, Toots, you were on a team. Tell me what you remember from that year. Because Bradshaw's arm went on. He threw two touchdowns past the first quarter. Start of the second quarter, his arm goes, he leaves the field, and that's the end of his career. What do you remember? I remember that we were supposed, it was the New York Sack Exchange, and yes. we were supposed to, oh, we yeah. were going to, we were going to check with me, he was going to call everything at the line of scrimmage, and we were supposed to run the ball, and he just comes out, and he <laughs> just, start, he walks in the huddle, I just remember he had a big old smile on his face, he said, come on boys, let's have some fun, he clapped his hands, and then he just started, <laughs> And then, the ball. and then on the at the well, the other thing I remember is I sat next to him at the end of the bench, um, in between series. He was already out. He was done with the game. And I said, I said, Brad, I thought we were going to run the ball. And he says, he said, you know me, touch. I ain't no mailman. I'm a gunslinger. <laughs> and I went, no, man. You know what I remember about that game because yeah. it was the last <laughs> game that uh, the Jets played at Shea right. also, uh -huh. and I was standing outside. And Chuck Knoll was holding a press conference standing outside. They didn't have a room back then. So they're standing in the hallway, and there's probably 20, 30 press guys around. Down the hallway comes a, a very belligerent gentleman with a couple of New York City cops there. Very and they intoxicated. Got him. Yes, very intoxicated. Yeah, very into and the guy is fighting and yelling, and the cops are giving him a little business, and they're bringing him down the hallway. He stops when they get to the press conference, looks over at Chuck, and, of course, everybody stopped to watch this guy come down the hall. And he looks right at Coach Noll and he says, great game, Coach. And then he starts fighting with the cops <laughs> again. I mean, it was unbelievable. I just watched him go all the way down the hallway. Like he that. had money on his Steelers. It <laughs> yeah. could have been. Now, now Myron, did you, did, you, <clears throat> did you think at that time that it was Terry's last year, or did you think that he'd be able to come back after that? No, I, I thought it would be his last year because during the off season he goes to the Shreveport down in his hometown in Louisiana, the Shreveport bone and joint clinic for mm -hmm. surgery. Can you believe it? And of course, he called me into my radio talk show and he says, I'm doing great, Cope. I threw 15 yards to my trainer down here in the parking lot today. I says, that's wonderful. Well, how did he do when he came to Pittsburgh throwing a ball in practice? Tell me. He never did. Uh, it was almost like I, I think the first day he warmed up and they put him on the shelf right away. I remember he was jogging. Lob it. Yeah, lob it. He might have just didn't. Yeah, he couldn't. It was he obvious. had no zip dude out to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was it was pretty obvious that he wasn't gonna be able, <coughs> be able to. Uh, Throw the ball. That was a tough year too, because we we, we didn't have good. Uh, yeah we we, we just were very good. good. We were we were ten and two. Well, you one two period. were in the offensive line. Why <laughs> wouldn't you be good? Oh, oh, oh that hurt. That, that Little does, zinger. That, that, that does works. Hurt. Martin, what's your uh, outside of that? What's your next favorite Terry Bradshaw story? What's your most memorable uh, experience with Terry? She, I never thought about that. Really? Yeah. I mean, you look at that guy. He used to come into our room at training camp yeah. every year, and he'd sit in there because it was kind of like the rec room. Our room was just on the second floor there. Because we were the first, one of the first teams that had, we, first rooms that had an air conditioner. We had air conditioning. We snuck, we got an air conditioner, and we ripped right. the window out in Bonaventure Hall because it was so hot. And then we stuffed that baby in there and hit the hit the switch, Wolf, and then everybody came in. Wolf buys this 10 gazillion BTUs air oh, conditioner. Yeah, for, it's for a ballroom, and we've got it. In our uh, in in our little B room, and there was icicles on the walls because it was so cold. But I tell you what, Brad, you well, like to come down and sit there. I once asked Noel, like years later, if he ever tried, <coughs> pardon me, if he ever tried uh, <coughs> the West Coast offense, if he ever thought about trying it, where you know you throw those short passes. <laughs> Uh, to a receiver, and you hope he'll take off with the ball and make it a long game. And he says, we tried it for a few days in practice, but all the receivers was com were complaining 
because Bradshaw was leaving their chest bruised. <laughs> you know, they all had bruised chests. And fingers. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more of Myron Cope right here in the locker room.